Hello everyone, I am Cerebral and this is Cerebral Talks TV and today I have to share a story with you that I stumbled across and my jaw just dropped. My jaw has completely dropped and someone mentioned it under one of my shorts videos and I told them I'm going to talk about this, okay? Look on the screen. 850 plus unalived, mostly women, Graped and tortured, 450 plus suspects sought after by the FBI. These are truck drivers, everybody. Long haul truck drivers. And I said under the comment section, I said, ladies, this is your husband's. Oh, yeah. There was a time women used to be kind of proud to say my husband's a truck driver, right? But these are your husband's out there. 450 suspects that they know of are being sought after by the FBI. Most of these men, I guarantee you, are married men, have girlfriends, have children, and they're out there graping and torturing other women. You know, there are a lot of women. I just uploaded a video about men with CDLs and how a lot of them are known to have multiple women in different states and multiple different children women don't know about and so much drama. That's not true for all of them, but it's a very well known thing. And there will be women who will be so naive. My husband's a good man. My husband is out on the road. Your husband's a man. A man who was going without having punani for weeks on end. A lot of them go, they get prostitutes at the truck stops. And as you can see, do horrible things. Stop being naive and thinking this cannot be your husband. Yeah, he might be good to you, but a lot of women are married to monsters and they have no clue that their husbands are monsters. Also, this is an industry that does take in a lot of men who have been to prison for grape and molestation. I saw a woman, this black woman, she's made millions of dollars having her own trucking company. And she said, I don't give a damn what they've done, what they've gone to jail for. for. I hire them. Hmm. Even grapists. And a lot of people think, can they be reformed? As you can see, no. This is a perfect thing for a lot of them to get into. I'm just going to be quiet right now. And I'm going to play you two video clips telling sh telling us all what's going down. I mean, I, I just, it's not hard to believe, but once you hear it, I'm, you're like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Listen to this. Multiple serial killer truckers are currently on the loose, hunting for victims along American highways. Take a look at this map from the Highway Serial Killings Initiative database. The red dots show where remains have been found along highways over the past 30 years. Well, right now, the FBI believes at least 850 murders are linked to long haul truckers. We started noticing within our database, a number of bodies along the side of the road. Victims kept coming up as prostitutes, specifically truck stop prostitutes. And one after another, our main suspects or confirmed offenders were identified as truck drivers. They're extremely difficult to track down and the mobility of their occupation allows them access to so many different areas of victim selection and then victim release locations. When Frank Figlusi, a former FBI assistant director for counterintelligence, heard the disturbing data, he realized that he needed to zero in. So he spent a year riding more than 2,000 miles in a semi to research the subculture and find answers. Well, that research culminated in his new book, Long Haul, Hunting the Highway Serial Killers. And he writes, quote, part cowboy, part fighter pilot, part hermit. Long haul truckers glide along the edge of a certain seam in the fabric of our society, the seam that separates their reality from ours. Killer truckers exploit that seam. 
Well, the book explores some notorious cases like that of Robert Ben Rhodes, the man known as the truck stop killer. He was finally busted in April of 1990 when a state trooper pulled him over in Arizona. But that trooper was not prepared for the shocking discovery he made. A woman chained inside of the truck's cab screaming, covered in red welts and lacerations with only slippers on her feet. A police soon learned that that man had built a torture chamber in the rear of the semi. It is possible he killed as many as 50 people. And this author joins us live. We're so glad to be speaking with him about, about more. Not 50 people, 50 women more than likely. On his new book. Thank you so much for making the time tonight. Thank you, Natasha, for help, helping get the word out. Yeah, so the FBI says at least 850 murders are linked to long-haul truckers. Did you find any other troubling data in your research? Yeah, the numbers don't get any better. So 850 roadside murders of women, mostly sex trafficked women, but not all. And then there are 200 of those murders that are considered unsolved and active investigations. And when I asked the FBI, how many suspects are you currently looking at? The answer is 450 within the trucking community. In fact, 25 long haul truckers are already serving time in prison for murders as part of this initiative, but that has not made a dent in the unsolved cases. What makes it so difficult to pinpoint these murderers to, to get to the bottom of these cases? You know, these 18-wheelers 18, 18 are essentially mobile crime scenes. They'll grab a victim in one jurisdiction, they'll rape or murder her in a second jurisdiction, and they'll dump the remains in a third jurisdiction. So that's challenge number one for law enforcement as they try to determine who, they're, who they, they have on their hands in terms of a dead body and putting a name with the body, let alone identifying who's done it. And then you've got the nature of the victims. They are almost all sex trafficked. That means that the families may not even know that they're missing. So it's tough to get someone to champion their cause with the law enforcement community. And that's part of what I hope will happen with this book. Yeah, certainly. Uh, this forgotten population, I think that a, a lot of times they, they do not get the light that they deserve uh, on their case. You know, and obviously most truckers are not serial killers. We have to say this. Uh, can you speak about the experience with the trucking subculture that, that, that you found going all of those miles uh, in a semi truck? What did you learn about the isolation, the general lifestyle and, and the implications for a serial killer? Yeah, I put my investigator uh, hat back on after retiring from 25 years in the FBI, retiring as assistant director, and I came away incredibly impressed with the hard work and dedication of the American trucker. In fact, in part, I dedicate my book to the stalwart American trucker. The data in terms of their impact on the economy is astounding. We know that grocery stores would run out of goods in three days if truckers stopped, but there is a dark side to long haul trucking. And I asked the question, you know, nature or nurture? Is it a predilection to kill and, and to be violent against women that attracts some people to the long haul job and certain kinds of trucking? I go deep into that. We know that studies show that 44% of truckers are exhibiting signs of major clinical depression. 20% of them binge drink five or more drinks at a sitting. And 10% of truckers say they drink alcohol every single day. That is so important. And we're almost out of time, but very briefly, what is your biggest recommendation for the FBI as they investigate all of these unsolved cases, all of these murders that may be linked to these long haul truckers? Out of the research, yeah. what is your recommendation? As an investigator, I tried to narrow down that pool of 450 suspects by focusing on the question of corporate drivers versus owner operators, and specifically, what kind of truck are we talking about that might lend itself to being the killer? My recommendation would be that they focus on the type of trucking and the nature of the truck being driven. It is a fast topic and such a deep dive and look the book again long haul hunting the highway serial killers uh, Frank Figlusi I really appreciate your time and insight tonight thank you by now you've heard about the FBI hunting 500 serial killer truckers inside the trucks they found mobile torture chambers and interstate I-40 is one in particular that stands out as a major hot spot the route travels from Wilmington North Carolina to Barstow California running through Raleigh Nashville Memphis Little Rock Oklahoma City 
Albuquerque, and Flagstaff. Convicted serial killer trucker Bruce Mendenhall was arrested July 2007 in Tennessee, found guilty in 2010 of the murder of Sarah Hulbert after his truck matched CCTV footage. Weeks before his arrest, the body of a naked 25-year-old woman, Samantha Winters, was found wrapped in plastic. She had been shot in the head and found in a dumpster. Sarah Hulbert was found the exact same way. These victims were merely two of at least a thousand women that cops believe have been killed by truckers over the years. When police raided 56-year-old Mendenhall's truck cab, they were in disbelief. Investigators called it a killing chamber. The stash of torture devices included a rifle, a nightstick, tape, handcuffs, latex gloves, sex toys, and a bag of bloody clothing. The DNA found on the clothing in Mendenhall's truck matched five missing or murdered women. One was Karma Purpura, a 31-year-old mother of two who was last seen at a truck stop in Indianapolis, nearly 300 miles away. Also in the truck were Karma's mobile phone and her bank card. This can't help but bring to mind serial killer David Parker Ray, the toy box killer, and the $100,000 he invested in his torture trailer, which he called the toy box. He is suspected of murdering anywhere between 60 to over 100 women. Between 1957 and 1999, he picked up women, many of them sex workers, or he had his young female accomplice, Cindy Hendy, lure females back to the premises. She called them packages. Once they were brought into the trailer, they were blindfolded and bound. And before he did anything physical, he played a tape they would have to listen to, listing what all the women who had been there previously had gone through and all the things that they themselves were about to endure. It's a horrific tape. You can probably find it on YouTube. Ray sexually tortured and presumably killed his victims using whips, chains, pulleys, straps, clamps, leg spreader bars, surgical blades, every gynecological device imaginable, electric shock machines and saws. Hendy, who was now 64 years old, was also convicted, but she was set free after 20 years. Ray died in 2002 while incarcerated. Mendenhall was convicted of Hulbert and Winters murders and charged with killing Karma Purpura. He's also suspected of murdering at least five more women. But these deaths aren't isolated. There could be around 500 truck drivers involved in the murders over a 35 year span. Robert Rhodes was one of the first truck stop killers on record. He is believed to have killed 50 women in the span of 15 years. Here he is back in the day. And the hallmark of this killer? Like Mendenhall, he built a mobile torture dungeon in the back of his truck. Behind its steel door, women were held captive with handcuffs. He inflicted agonies on his victims by piercing their flesh with fish hooks. His final victim, Regina Walters, was just 14 years old. She had run away from her dysfunctional family home in Pasadena, Texas, with her then boyfriend Ricky in 1990. Rhodes picked them up in Houston and swiftly killed Ricky, shooting him in the head. He kept Regina prisoner for weeks sexually assaulting her. To torment the family, he even called her father and told him, I made some changes. I cut her hair. Regina's corpse was later discovered in a deserted Illinois farmhouse. She had been strangled to death. Across America, just 25 ex-truckers are in prison for murder. One is Delmas Colvin, a 65-year-old man who was dubbed the Interstate Strangler. Following his arrest in 2004, Colvin told the investigators he didn't keep track of his kills. He couldn't remember them all, but he estimated he killed around 47 to 52 women, almost all sex workers. Like Mendenhall, he wrapped the victims in plastic and duct tape. He just said he enjoyed the killing. Colvin often burst out laughing when recalling the murders of his victims. Victims. On one occasion, he said he took a call from his mother while in the midst of murdering a woman. He liked to look into the victim's eyes as they died, he recalled, stating, I always sleep well at night. Unfortunately, sex workers who report sexual assaults are rarely taken seriously, even when it's a concerned friend reporting the disappearance of a sex worker. Some people wonder if a male-dominated police force should even be investigating such things. But the one chilling unanswered question that we're all left with, just how many other truckers are driving mobile torture chambers and carrying weapons? And how many women's bodies have simply never been found? Hearing this just absolutely disgusts me. And this is why I will continue to support the death penalty. I will support the death penalty in this country to the day I go. Do you, did you hear what I just played? And I just, I couldn't help but think of that movie. I couldn't help but think of that movie called Joyride. Have you ever seen that movie called Joyride? Check out that movie, Joyride. It's really good. And it was the psycho um, truck driver 
and the type of people that's out on the road. Okay. I don't give a damn if they drink every day. I don't, I mean, depression is bad, but it will never excuse kidnapping women. And I don't care that they're SCX workers. They're human beings. They're women just trying to survive in this country and have an SCX and getting paid for it. Okay. These are mothers. These are people who escaped abuse, abused homes. And you know what? Think about all the kids pictures you see when you go out to the supermarket teenagers missing you know some sometimes when kids are missing they hitch rides they hitch rides they can they might hitch rides with truck drivers trying to get to the nearest town and these truckers are kidnapping these kids too and graping them torturing them I, I, I want our system to have some sort of empathy for the victims it's not oh he just unalived her you know what physical pain feels like? A saw, a scalpel, gynecologist tools, fish hooks, strangulation. Where is the empathy for the victims in this country? We need to get a bill or a law to, to speak for them. Imagine what they went through. That poor girl, 14 years old, uh, left her abusive home, thought she was getting away just to be tormented and tortured. The physical pain, the mental pain is strangled. Okay. They let that woman who was an accomplice with that man, they let her out of prison. Our justice system is a joke. She should have never been let out of prison. She should have got the death penalty. OK, and all the other ones who have been caught, 450 sought by the FBI, you know, and like they said, it's the perfect career for a number of them on the road. You pick up a prostitute at a truck stop or kidnap some innocent woman at a truck stop. You're in the next town and you, you and then they dump the bodies, you know, also, I think, well, I thought that most truck drivers, they have a schedule, a time limit that they have to be at their destination to drop off what they're delivering. So I would think there would be, they need to get trackers on these truck, on these trucks. They need to track them, their locations. If they're going straight to where they're supposed to go, they need to get built-in cameras or something, something, because this doesn't make any kind of sense. And we, I, we all know a lot of these dudes are probably in relationships with women all over the place or married and they don't have a clue that their boyfriends and husbands are out here graping um, teenagers and women and tormenting them and dumping them off like they ain't nothing. And I hate society. Some people, not all people in society, oh, they were prostitutes. So damn what? So? Why are you saying her life doesn't matter? Because she was a prostitute. Also, when I hear them say their families don't know they're missing, I'm like, I mean, if you talk to your relatives, if you've been missing for months, I would think somebody would notice that or a year or two or five years that you have gone missing. So this is insane seeing this, these numbers, seeing that map of all the bodies that they've been finding linked to long haul truck drivers. Now is like they said, it doesn't mean that they're all doing it. A number of them are doing their job, but it's also a lot of sinister parts. There are a number of them do hire men who have gone to jail for molestation and grape. Okay. And they don't, a lot of those guys, they don't reform. They don't change. They, they end up doing it again. A number of them. They should have been executed the first damn time, in my opinion. So, um, this is crazy to see this. Look at this video, these video clips I played again. I mean, 850 bodies over the, over the years. And this is just what they know of. Okay. What they've been able to find, what they've been able to find. We, at we, we are not safe as women. We're not safe. And even some boys, boys get great too, but it's not on the level of girls. We are not safe. A number of men swear they can go without a woman. I don't need women, but look what they're doing kidnapping you, graping you, tormenting you, and just going from town to town with the bodies or them chained up, all types of stuff. This is frightening.
This is frightening. Ladies, you got to be careful. You cannot trust no man on average. I don't give a damn what they tell you online. You cannot trust most of them. And just because your husband seems nice and sweet, you don't know that man fully. I mean, at the end of the day, we're two people together. You don't, you don't always know that man. You don't know his secrets like that all the time. You don't know what he does when he goes out on work, on work visits, when he goes to different counties, different cities for work, he can do anything. All you can do is hope and pray that he's not doing nothing crazy, but this is horrible. And I hope that they find all of them. FBI, get up in there, go undercover. I mean, I know a lot of truck drivers, they don't always talk to each other because they're just on the road delivering things, but they go to those truck stops to wash up, okay? And the um, the prostitutes, some of them are at the truck stop. And um, this is just a mess. This is, this is a mess and this is shocking. So I'm just gonna be quiet right now. I want to hear what you have to say about that. What has just come out about uh, what's going on with these long haul truck drivers. Okay. Not all of them, but a significant amount. Um, excuse me, 458 suspects. That's a hell of a lot that you know of. My goodness, my goodness. So let me know in the comment section what you think about all of this.